this is something you do. You're always welcome to join me in expanding your knowledge base. Comments are always welcome, man. Please subscribe. And while, while we're waiting, you can see that a lot of information came up. The Omega 320P. You see the bar, which I used to remember what that meant. Um, you see the upload protocol in the library folder. Um, board various standards. So you can see information here. It's also showing available location as your Arduino folder. The thing about this screen now is this your workspace right now. And this particular file, you need to make sure you keep it there. That's the name of your board. It has pretty important files in there. It has your inclusion, your Arduino, your standard. It's got your board's programming files in there. So you want to make sure that you do not delete that one. Now, Blink 4, well, that's your project. Um, blinky for that's your project the projects that you create you can delete without no problem what that means is you can be create many projects just so you have and if, if you're using an Arduino Uno board you're fine so you could create many projects and add them here and just keep going and going and going and, and it's fine what we have now is we have our blinky now remember, from what I said, this is not gonna. We're not gonna change this to .ino. It's gonna. These are the files that we're gonna use: the .cpp and the header file. We're not gonna have a .ino in this project because what would be the .ino is the .cpp. The CPP file is going to be recognized as our .ino when it's uploaded to our Arduino board and when we're making sure that it's correct. So that's why we went into our file types and made sure to put .ino as a .cpp or .c. And that's why we did that. We don't do it as a header file because that's recognized as a source file. Okay, so now when we click on that, double click on it, and then it'll bring up the file. Okay, now pretty much it's the same thing with the header file. And you're going to be using these header files for functions and things like that. And where you would declare, this is not definitions. Okay. So you're going to add your function declarations for the project there. So I always make sure to. So you're going to be declaring your functions right there when you get to actually creating functions for your Arduino sketches. Going back to the .cpp file, quickly what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, let's see here, quickly what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add the Blink program in there. Just for the sake of saving some time. And We're just going to put it right there. Okay. As you can see, we don't have any errors yet. They're probably coming up, so don't get too happy yet. So, um, but we're adding our file here. The pin mode, all that is there. For the Blink file, we have not actually, for this Blink file, we actually did rename pin 13 because normally it's 13 here and 13 here and 13 here. But I actually put that as a variable and LED is replacing the 13s that will be there because it's always good to just 
add your value sent to variables so that when you change it, you don't have to go down and change all of them. You just need to change that particular variable value. Okay, so another thing to remember is in your header file, make sure to check it because if you have an include there, then you want to copy it over to your .cpp file. Okay, so it already put our blinky.h in there because it created it like that. But we want to go ahead and add the arduino.h that was from the header file as well. Let's go ahead and save that. Now let's let's check it. Let's see how it went. So the way you do that is you're gonna click on this hammer, which is our build release for Project Blinky 4. Click on it. And normally or sometimes you will get bing and then it'll say dot gcc. Uh, there you go, AVR dash dot dash GCC dot ESE application error. And that one is crazy hard to deal with. So we're just going to let it go ahead and go through. And it's very irritating. Believe me. So that could be a couple of things. And from what I'm hearing, is been one that's kind of stumped, folks. The way I got past that is one of the solutions that I found was on this site, AVR Freaks. So just search Google AVR Freaks, uh, Windows 8.1 compilation error, and what I found is this particular link here. Madwizard.org download MSYS-1.0. So you want to click on that and download that zip. I've already done it. And if your computer is like mine, it's going to go to your download folder. Okay, go to your downloads folder after you downloaded it. Mine is here. What you want to do is you want to extract it. And let's see. Extract it. And we're going to do extract all. We're going to extract it to the file that we did before, which is, of course, our do test. And then Eclipse Arduino, and then Eclipse, and just extract it to that folder. Okay, and extract it. Okay, and we can get out of that one. Let's go to our Eclipse file. I believe that's there now. And there it go, my sys dash 1.0 dot dll. So, what I normally do when I'm doing stuff like this is I will put this in a new folder because you want to be a bit careful because what you're doing now is troubleshooting. So, it's in there. So then we're going to cut that and we're going to take it to the Arduino folder. We're going to go Arduino, we're going to go Hardware, Tools, AVR, Utils, and Ben. We're going to look to see if we got it right. Okay, and there's the file right there. That's the original file. So let's go ahead and paste this. Oh, are you kidding me? 
Okay. So here's how I'm going to do that. Since it did not copy. I'm going to bring up another file. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so that's our file right there. Okay, then let's bring up the one we have here. Okay. So that's my sister. So we got two files right there. Okay, side by side. What we're going to do is we're going to... This is the right one. So we're going to go ahead and create a new folder. We're going to put original... My sis 1.0. Okay. So, I don't even know if that's the way you pronounce it, but that's how it look. Okay, so going to find that original. It's right here, so we want to cut it. We want to take it to that original, to that folder. We want to paste it there. Now, the reason you're doing that is in case it turns out that this, when it we're loading, don't like this installation, we have the original that we could put back in there in case we need it again. Now, this one, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut it out of here. Or you could copy it if you want to leave a copy in there, but I don't. And we're going to uh, paste it into this folder. Okay. So we now have the down the, the replacement mysis in there. Okay. So we could go ahead and minus that off. minus that and we want to restart Eclipse so X that off we want to exit it now the reason why we're actually restarting Eclipse is so that we give it a chance to do whatever we need let's go ahead and pull it back up Just making sure it's the right one. Okay. So. Okay. Hopefully. This is what we need. And while we're at it. Before we run the test. Let's go ahead and. Get our numbering here. So, when you want your numbers in the editor, all you do is right-click on the border. Show line numbers, and there go your numbers. Okay, so now what we want to do is... You want to go ahead and... Select our project, click on our build hammer, let's see, good size, saying make DLL, or make all, good size, and we have a winner, okay, so let's build it again. See if we could get rid of those errors. What's the errors? Okay. So let's see here. Click on your project again in AVR. Did 
errors are gone. We launch the file. AVR dude is finished. We have our call ran. We have our blink going. And that, people, is how you install Arduino and get it up and working. You have to follow those steps, or I had to follow those steps in order to get a working project. From there, you can continue on. We have a successful install, and I hope it worked for you. If it didn't, just go through the process again, and it should. If not, go ahead and leave comments and have a great rest of your day. I am Ebony Geek and I hope that the information provided has been helpful to you. Please remember to subscribe. Happy building and happy coding.